In this lesson, I'll be giving you an introduction to styling your React components. We're going to learn how global styling works, how to have CSS per component, also the concept of CSS modules in React, what problem they solve and why they are useful. And we're going to look at some general best practices for approaching styling in your components. Now, like I said, this lesson is an introduction to styling because when it comes to styling your React components, there are various libraries, tools and approaches that you can apply. Apply. This video is an introduction and in more lessons to come, we'll be looking at more approaches and exploring some of those libraries. First off, we're going to start our server and we're starting from where we stopped in the previous lesson. npm run dev and yes, here we have this. Let me zoom in a bit. Now, if I open main.gsx, if you remember from the first lesson, main.gsx is like the entry point to react in our case here. You have index.css here and if I open index.css and put it on the right here, you have everything here now because you're importing index.css in this main react file that means every style you declare here is going to apply all through your application and this is a case of global style global css so if i should come here and do button background color green i think i can just put it here for readability you can see that even though we don't have any button directly here for the fact that if you open app you have app and if you open this button component you have this button here because this index of css is a global style it applies to all the buttons here and same thing if i should do h2 color red we have this h2 and this is coming from heading component yes we have this h2 here and we also have h2 in the app.gsx here this is index.css where you can apply your global styles now let's say you wanted to style this button component in this button component here let's say this has a class name of my button of course you could come to index.css and say my button and then let's say you have a border of two pixels solid green and you have a color of white and let me take this away now if you look at the button here this applies well maybe i should give it the background color of dark gray yeah well this actually looks like our background so maybe i give this black so that is noticeable okay something like this now you can do this in your index.css and it's going to work for the button component because the button is under the app component and the app component is here but it is also good practice to have your styles close to your component if i open the file navigation here you can see the button component here in the component direction they have index.css but the styles that are meant for this button component you want to put it closer which would make it easy for you to manage your styles so what i can do here in this component is that i can have a different file called button.css you can use lowercase if you want and in this button.css i can go to my index.css take this from here and I can go to the button.css and paste this here and now in the button component I can now import that CSS so here I have import button.css and now look we still have our style here and this way index.css doesn't have to manage styles that are specific for this button component and if I go to my button.css I can do whatever I want to do here for example adding a padding of 20 pixels if you remember from the previous lesson, the reason why these buttons are empty is because here we are rendering children. So if I should take everything from here and I only render the label, you see all our buttons here now have labels. And if you go to app.gsx, you can see the label prop, label prop, and so it is for the remaining buttons. So now our CSS is close to the button, button.css, button.gsx. Now you could have it like this, but another way you can also improve this file structure is that in the components here, you can create a directory called button, and then you can move your button.css in there, and you can move your button.gsx in there. Um, now my VS Code is asking me to update the imports for button.gsx. That's because in app.gsx here, I was importing button. So so now it has updated it to component slash button slash button. And now I've improved the structure. So I know when you open the button directory, you have button.css, button.gsx. Let's do the same thing for our heading. So here I'm going to have heading and then I can move this in here. Update imports for heading.gsx. So just in case you don't get this prompt, let me press no. What you have to do is come to app.gsx or wherever it is you imported the heading component and you have to update it. So initially we had component slash heading, but now it is living in component 
component slash heading slash heading so i can come here and add an extra heading okay that should fix it and then i can create a css file here called heading.css and here i can have maybe heading give this a color of white padding of 20 pixels border of one pixel solid white and this is not going to apply to our heading yet because we haven't added a class name so here i can add a class name now with normal html if you wanted to declare a class you would use class right well in the javascript world because react is also a javascript world you should use class name and one reason you can think for this is that you know in javascript you have the class keyword so having class like this can conflict with that keyword and that is why you should use class name which will be interpreted as class in html so if i should give this a class name of heading and let's say i inspect element for this high you can see here it is interpreted as class heading so here you have class name heading and then up here we can now import our css so import heading.css and look now we have our heading with this and we have our heading here with this and now i can come to index.css and i can remove this so you can see here that index.css serve as your global styles what styles do you want to apply all through your application you can do that here but when it comes to each component it's good practice to have the css close to the component just as we have in our button and we have in our heading but now there is a problem and i'm going to explain what that problem is so let me open app.gsx now in app.gsx we have this h2 let's say i give this h2 heading you can see that this also applies here now this can cause a problem and what do i mean by that? let's say here we're importing app.css and here we have app.css so if i open app.css and i do heading color pink you can see that the color pink does not apply here why do you think this is the case well because we have this heading class class for app.css which we import in app.gsx but also in heading.css we have this heading class if i should take away this color white from this heading class you can see that our heading is now pink so even though we put our css very close to our component all our css is still going to be gathered together so the css in heading css in button css in app.css css in index.css everything is going to come together and if you have repeated class names like this even if they are in different css files they can begin to conflict now one solution is you might say in app.gsx maybe you call this app heading and then in heading.gsx you call this heading heading now in your heading.css you can have heading heading and in your app.css you can have app heading like this now although this works you can see that you now have to do an extra work with your class names and if you're not careful let's say somewhere in the button.css let's say you do something like app heading and you give this border to pixel solid grid for example but this also applies to the heading that you have in your app.gsx how can we tell react that whatever styles i have in my heading.css i want that to only be applied to my heading component whatever i want in my button.css i want that to be applied to my button.gsx and whatever i want in my app.css i want that to apply to only the things directly in app.gsx now this is where we use css modules css modules allows you to scope classes and styles to components and creating a css module is very straightforward all you have to do here is you have button.css but instead what you have is button.module.css you have heading.css this is now going to be heading.module.css you have app.css this is now going to be app.module.css css and for the index.css we can leave it like this we don't need to make this a module because we want every style applied here to apply all through our application you can think of index.css as generic styles for example for our buttons we can say every button should have a cursor of pointer and this is very generic it doesn't need to be scoped to any component this works you can say that for every h1 and h2 it should have a margin top bottom 10 pixels left right zero of course you can still overwrite this in several components but you can think of index.css as your generic styles so you have this button module okay i can take this line away in this case of my button what you have to do in this button.gsx now is that first you have to import button.module.css but what you now have to do is import styles from this will be imported as a module and you can assign that to uh, a variable which is going to be an object so this can be styles it can be style it can be s whatever i want but you usually see this as style 
styles. Now let's say I come here and do console.log styles so that you see what it looks like. Well, now we're getting an error here and the reason for that error is that this is still app.css so I need to change this to app.modu.css and same thing for the heading. Instead of importing heading.css, I need to import heading.modu.css. Now we have this. You can see that none of our styles are applied again. But going back to this button components where we are doing console log styles, if we should check what the console looks like, you can see styles is an object and if you open this object, what do you see here? You see a key called my button and this has a value of underscore my button well has this random value that react generates now let's say we go back to our button and we generate something called flex for example and this has a display of flex now if i come back here again you can see that this styles object from here has flex and it has my button so now what you can do is instead of saying my button like this you are now going to have something like first you have your curly bracket because you want to assess the styles object and this is related to javascript remember i said you need to have your curly bracket when you want to use a javascript expression and then you can assess the my button key and now you can see all our buttons are now back to background black white and green border and if we should still open the elements tab again you can see that our button now has this class name so it doesn't have a class of my button anymore it has this random value and this way if we go to app.gsx and let's say we have a normal button element here which says don't and we have a class of my button you can see that this doesn't get that my button class that is because here we are assessing the styles as a module assigning it to this object and now we can assess it like this so i can come here and i can take off this line so the same thing we're going to do in our heading we go to the heading module we can just do this as heading and here we're going to import styles from and in this heading heading we can now have styles heading so you can either use the bracket notation like this but since this doesn't have any hyphen we can just do styles.heading the reason why we're using the bracket notation here is that in javascript you cannot have styles my button like this because of this hyphen if it was an underscore it should have been fine but hyphens like this don't work and that's why we had to use the brackets notation so back to the heading we have styles like this and then we have styles at heading and you can see this now applies to this high and this high coming from this heading component but if we go back to the app component even if we remove this app slash heading like this you see that it does nothing to this hello that is because by using this approach we have now scoped these styles to this component and then we can assess the object like this now in app component you can still choose to do something like import styles from and then you go to components you go to heading and then you go to heading.module.css you can still do something like this where in this case here we can now use the same styles.heading and you're going to see hello still has the border so the fact that we are making this heading css a module it doesn't mean that you can can only use it in this heading component just as we saw in the app components you can still use it like this the benefit of having your modules is that wherever you import that styles that is the only place you can use it compared to before where the app components didn't import anything from the heading css and that style still applied to the app component by doing this you are saying okay i want to use the css in this module but since this is the app component we can do import styles from app.module .css and here we have styles heading so we can go to app.module.css and we can have heading like this and then we have color pink you can see color pink here let me even give this blue so that it is more obvious okay now because this is still your normal css you can have all your css stuff you can choose to have your media queries so media max width 500 pixels and then here maybe we can do your heading to say font size 3 rem maybe your heading was font size 8 rem before so now if you have this you have your 8 rem when you reduce it goes back to your 3 rem so you can do all your css related stuff just as you normally would adding a module here just makes that css file a module which you can then import into your component assigning that to a variable which is going to be an object and then you can use the different classes you have in your module you can use that for any element that you want to apply classes to now just as you have with classes in general 
it is a good practice to have a proper naming convention or naming consistency. So you can choose to use any of the CSS conventions out there. I use BEM. I don't use BEM strictly, but I try to use BEM when I can. So it's good to be consistent with your class names. And another good practice is having utility classes. For example, let's say in your heading, you want all your heading to have display of flex. And also in your button, you want your button to have display of flex. Let me remove this line. Now instead of having display.flex repeated multiple times, you can instead go to your index.css. Remember your index.css allows you to specify global classes and styles. You can come here and have a utility class called flex and this does display flex. You can have a utility class called center and you can do display flex, justify content, center, align items, center. You can have a utility class called bg green and what this utility class does is background color green and now instead of having to put display flex for your button here you can take this off and in your button.gsx after you have your styles my button like this you can also have a button called flex now you would need to concatenate this because this is a value and this is a value and how do you concatenate strings in javascript well we can use the plus like this so you have this value plus space this value or you can also have the back ticks which allows you to interpolate expressions in strings so I can have the back tick like this and do this here and then I can put this in curly brackets and then I need my dollar sign here I almost forgot so this way you have been able to concatenate this value and this value again because this back tick is specific to JavaScript you cannot do something like this it's not going to work so you need your curly bracket to tell react I want to do some JavaScript stuff in here so I can also change this now to BG green I can see see the buttons here have bg green that is because in our index.css we have this utility class heading.gsx i can also come here repeat the same thing concatenate the value of this heading class on the styles object and i can have bg green also i can see this now has a background of green so instead of repeating yourself multiple times you can come to your index.css i can also call it global.css but you just go to your global style sheet apply your defaults like button cursor pointer you can also have img with 100 percent and you can also have your utility classes like flex center bg green and as much as you want that way you are not repeating yourself in all your module.css files you can also choose to call this index.css global.css um, for example we can come here and we can have global.css but then we have to come to main.gsx and tell it to import global.css so you can can call it whatever it doesn't have to be index.css but what is very important to know is that whatever css file you import here which is the main entry point to react where you do your rendering with the react dom this is going to be applied all through your applications like i said it's good practice to have your global styles classes your defaults here your utility classes here and then for each component you have the css file close to that component and you can also make that css file a module which will allow you to scope the styles you have to that component. So I hope this video has given you a good introduction on how styles work in your React components. Now there is still more to styling your React components. There is SAS, there is Tailwind, styled components. There are a bunch of libraries out there that can improve your CSS experience and we'll be exploring some of those libraries as we progress in this course. Now so far in this course, everything that we have been creating doesn't look nice. This button doesn't look nice. This text doesn't look nice. So what we're going to be doing in the next lesson is that we're going to be building this. This is a design from Dribble and in the next lesson we're going to be applying everything that we have learned so far on components, props and styling. We're going to apply all of that to build this. So see you in the next lesson.